um, you know, they took advantage and got to me. So I uh, just need to better getting the ball down. You know, I know that as a pitcher, you guys say, all right, you know, home run, bad inning, just flush it. But when, when Soto hits a home run like that, are those types of home runs more difficult to just flush and move on to the next pitch? No. Nah. Uh, home run's a home run. It doesn't matter if it barely goes over the fence, 500 feet over the fence. Still, I mean, was it three runs? It doesn't matter. You know, he's got to move on and uh, go get, get after him after that. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, it sounded like the Mets, at least before the game, were, were you know, talking about stretching you out. And they didn't commit to anything, but in the hopes that you would join this rotation. As a guy that's gone back and forth between starter and bullpen, how quickly do you feel like you could ramp up and what do you think you could bring to this rotation long term this season? Um, I don't know about uh, how quickly I could ramp up, but um, during the offseason, you know, they told me to come in and prepare as a starter. Um, they told me during, you know, before summer camp. So the same. So I was throwing, you know, quite up, uh, up and downs before uh, summer camp started. You know, this elbow thing. So I'm, I'm prepared to, you know, to go as a starter, whatever they need. Um, I know I love the start. That's a lot more fun. But uh, you know, we'll see. Thanks. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Robert. You just kind of said it. I, I love to start, um, but I know in the past you had you had talked about how you did enjoy the bullpen. Uh, despite having come up as a starter. Uh, when did that kind of change for you that you realized that the rotation was, was where you wanted to be? Um, just uh, probably last year, you know, just getting really, uh, worn down a little bit. You know, I kind of missed uh, my rest and uh, going out there every five days, multiple innings, you know, I kind of missed that. So, you know, that's a lot of fun. And I enjoy that a lot. And, you know, kind of coming in every day, being available. How much do you kind of view the, the next couple of months then as, uh, you know, maybe a test to prove to them that you belong in this rotation long term? Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm just going to come in, work hard every day and uh, just take it day by day. Thank you. Next question comes from Tim Britton. Hey, Robert, did, does your repertoire change when you're pitching as a starter? I mean, as a bull, as a reliever, you use a lot of different pitches, but is it, is it any different as a starter when you're thinking about going through a lineup multiple times? Uh, no, uh, I did uh, work on my repertoire down in, uh, you know, during the quarantine. Um, I worked on my four seam and my curveball is a little sharper. So, you know, I just got to get uh, my back on my sinker and my slider. Once I find that, I get those four pitches and uh, I'll be good. How did you feel? I think you used a few more four seamers tonight. How did you feel with that pitch? I felt good with them. Uh, you know, it's got to, you know, finish just a little bit. But, you know, it's just uh, my second time out. Uh, you know, but so I'm just going to get a better feel on the mound and, uh, be better results next time. Thanks. Next question comes from Justin Toscano. Hey, Rob, how was it starting for the first time in a while? Like, what emotions were going through your head as you were warming up out there? Man, I was so nervous. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, I felt like a little kid again, you know, you get to go through your proper warm up, your, your routine that you know, you knew since your, your high school and, you know, in the minors, so to get back to that, you know, it felt good to go through that, you know. Uh, couldn't feel my legs again for, you know, in the bullpen. But, uh, you know, it, it got under me and uh, I calmed down a little bit. You guys lose walk at an injury, you know, temporarily and, and Stroman opts out. Do you feel an added sense of responsibility, you know, to, to perform well because the rotation has, has kind of been in flux for you guys this year? I um, mean, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you always got to perform regardless of, you know, who's here and who's not here. So uh, just, you know, you know uh, just going to step up, try to step up for the team and uh, do my part. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Robert. Louis, you know, obviously we've spent a lot of time this season asking about the, the struggles with runners in scoring position. Tonight, though, you guys seem to, to get that big hit when you needed it in a number of occasions. Uh, did you like the at-bats better, or was it just a, a better result today? Better at-bats. Be better at-bats, Steve. And... Uh, from the first inning, uh, the guys showed it. I mean, they were able able to uh, lay off a few pitches. I mean, a, a guy like Anibal Sanchez, who you know, who's, who can nibble and and, and um, he can have you chase some pitches, uh, some strike to balls that like he had, you know, has with that split change. Um, the guys were able to lay off a few of those in the first inning, you know, to to respond the three uh, the three runs they scored in the top of the first. Us, you know, coming back with uh, scoring four there. There have been a couple of nights this season so far where it seemed like Pete was getting back on track. But to uh, have the night that he did tonight after an off day yesterday, uh, you know, using the opposite field and then hitting that home run as well, 
Uh, was this as good of a sign as you've seen so far? Yes, really good day. Uh, consistency of his approach, you know, as far as like, you know, foot getting down, staying behind the ball. Uh, we saw that from our view, you know, uh, first first at bat gets the double and then, you know, the walk. He uh, he looked really good overall overall uh, uh, tonight. We had a little a little conversation last night uh, after the game, and uh, he he told me like, "Louie, I'm feeling really good." And uh, every time he walked by me in the dugout throughout the game, he was he was just reminding me like, "I told you last night. I told you last night." So, you know, he he, he felt he looked really good from from our view in the dugout, and and uh, you know, it's good it's good to know that, that he's feeling better and better each at bat too. Next question comes from Justin Toscano. Hey, Louis, you guys hadn't scored much in the first inning this year before that. What does it say about you guys to respond that quickly there with four runs and take the lead right back? That was that was great. I mean, just great approach uh, by the guys. Um, you know, Nemo uh, let off everything with that great at bat, you know, turning into a homer. Um, then, you know, J.D. followed, hit the ball really hard uh, to the center fielder. So we, we were locked in from the start, you know, even though they scored those three runs on us in the top of the first. Uh, it was just great that those the, that the guys brought the approach, you know, uh, leading up uh, with Nemo, and then you know the guys follow, and then those two those two out, um, you know, hits uh, by Dom, by Hemi. Uh, I mean, those were those were clutch. Um, you know, those, those were definitely definitely big RBIs there to get us to get us back and uh, and, and to score right back on them four. And and what did you think of Batances in that inning? That was great. Uh, he he's. You know, told me that his direction was so much better with his fastball, and uh, you know when that happens, then now now he's got the weapon. Now now he's got his secondary pitches that he can also command, throw for strike, throw for chase, and that's what he did. I mean, three strikeouts in the inning. Um, you know, command a lot better. Everything. You know, Vila was there to the mid nineties, uh, and uh, you know that that's what he needs to create some contrast with his breaking pitches. Next question comes from Bruce Beck. Louis, you had lost back-to-back -back games. You were down 3 nothing after a half an inning. What did this ball club show you tonight in terms of fight and fortitude, and were you surprised? It shows the fight on the guys. I mean, that's one of the things I, I said here, uh, Bruce. Like, the one thing that uh, stands out is how the guys, you know, uh, fight back. Uh, you know, we, we had some tough games uh, already in the season, and but the guys are always there fighting. Um, you know, hitting with, with runners in scoring positions is one of the things that we haven't – uh, you know, be, being able to be consistent at tonight, it happened. I mean, the guys fighting, getting the quality of bats, creating situations is what put us in the spot where, you know, we fell in that situation before. But tonight was a different case. Um, you know, something, you know, they were talking about in our pregame meeting, you know, about hitting. And, uh, you know, I'm glad they, they transferred into the game. That was, a, that was an outstanding performance by, by our hitter. Next question is from Rich Catino. And Louie, you know, when you look at the bats Dom had tonight, not just a home run, even the RBI ground out, well placed out in the game. When you talk about how he's taken this opportunity and kind of ran with it and kind of showing you how hard he's worked. Yeah, it's great. It's great at bats. Those guys, four, four to six in the lineup, they did, they did great. I mean, they connected one good at bat after the other. Uh, those guys were ready to swing. I mean, they were aggressive, but they, they didn't get their pitch. They they also laid off. All, all three of them had you know walks. Um, you know, obviously the homers by by uh, by Pete and and uh, and Dom back to back. Uh, but you know, talking about Dom only, I mean, that was that was uh, just a just a great uh, day for him at the plate. Uh, you know, just being able to slow things down. He's a guy that's been in the spot also before uh, to drive runners, you know, with, uh, you know, guys in scoring position with even less than two outs. And, um, you know, he's kind of like going out of his zone. Not the case tonight. I mean, it's something that he's done before. He's able to to do it. And I'm, I'm glad he's slowing things down. He's able to, to deliver for us. Thanks. Next question comes from Tim Britton. Hey, Louis, how nice has it been to see Brandon Nimmo kind of carry over the September he had last year into the start of this season the way he has? Great. Uh, he's, you know, the quality of bats. You always get a quality of bat from him. Um, you, you almost seem like he's taking predetermined, like taking pitches, and, and he's not. He's just zoned in. And, uh, you know, as you guys saw the at bat against um, uh, the lefty Freeman, uh, you know, he was ready. He was ready to swing that first pitch because he was right there. So, you know, it's just a good, just such a good approach at the plate. And uh, he can grind some at bats. He can, he can take a six, seven pitch at bat uh, and, 
but he's ready to fire. If he gets that, that, that uh, first pitch near the zone where he's looking for, and he's going to hack as well. So leading off the game with a homer and, you know, bringing that offense uh, right, right way back uh, after they score three, I mean, that's, that's what you that's what you want from, from a leader there, you know, to get motorize that offense, you know, with, with a quality of bat. And do you like him using that bunt against the shift the way he did later in the game? Yes. I mean, if you feel it, uh, you know, you, you have the read on where they're playing you. I mean, you you, you might as well take it. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it, it's something that they, they've, they've asked. I know Chili Davis has always talked to them about beating the shift that way. They give it to you uh, for the guys that can do it uh, and want to do it. So, you know, I'm glad he, he took the chance and did it. I mean, I think they, they tried it on us a few times and, they want it. They want it foul. But every every time you get you get it, I mean, why not? Thank you for your time this uh, this evening, Luis. Good night, guys. Pete, your first question tonight comes from Steve Gelbs. All right. Just want to make sure I'm centered. Uh, whatever. My yeah, you're good. Oh, you're good. Fine. All righty. <laughs> Um, you know, Pete, you've talked a lot about how when you're going well, you've got some good plate discipline and you're really trying to use the middle of the field the opposite way. Um, yeah, you hit the home run tonight, but to hit those two doubles to the spots that you did to work that walk, is that an even better sign to you that you're getting close to where you want to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, guess, I guess the best way I can kind of describe uh, this whole process, I feel like the past like eight or nine games, like if I – the best way I can kind of describe this is like an airplane taking off. Like I'm in the in that takeoff mode uh, before you get to cruising altitude. So, I mean, I, I feel like that, um, like the first, I would say, nine to ten games or so were, were really tough. I mean, that's obvious. Um, I'm not going to deny that. But I feel like the past, like, eight or nine games uh, have been slowly taking off. And I feel like that I'm, I'm tr uptrending in the right way. I feel... Uh, like tonight, I felt really, really comfortable, and uh, I feel like that the more uh, I dive into this season, that the, the better I'm going to be, uh, not just with capitalizing on pitches, but laying off tough ones and uh, putting together quality at bat. So, I mean, that's, um, I mean, that, that's what it all boils down to: getting getting good swings on quality pitches and uh, not expanding the strike zone. So, what's left for you then to feel like you're at cruising altitude? Just keep building, uh, building consistency. That's that's the main thing. I feel like I'm I'm in a really good place right now, and uh, tomorrow I just want to build off of uh, build off of tonight with uh, some good at bats. Tomorrow, I want to uh, take some really good swings at good pitches, capitalize on stuff in the zone, and uh, just just hit the ball hard wherever it's pitched. I mean, it's, in my case, I mean that's um, I mean it's a simple uh, it's a simple task, but it's uh, the hardest thing to do in sports. So. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with, with tonight. I'm, I'm extremely happy. I mean, I'll, I'll take that every single day of the week. But uh, tomorrow, it's a, it's a new day, and um, I'm, I'm excited for tomorrow. Next question comes from Bruce Beck. Pete, hey, did you ever doubt yourself? Did you ever lose confidence? Or did you ever lose focus? Did you ever feel like the season was slipping away? Oh no! I mean, it's it's a short season, yes, but I mean, we're we're still not technically we're still not even a third of the way through. Um, I think tonight was 19 games, if I'm correct. So tomorrow would mark the uh, the one third mark, and I mean, we're st we still have a, a ton of baseball left. And for me, uh, the the biggest thing uh, throughout this entire thing is to to stay calm, trust myself. Like I I know what I can do. I know what type of player. Not that. Not that I was last year. I know what type of player I can be, and I know what. Um, and, and for me, I know that the sky's the limit. But I, I need to trust the process and and, and trust that everything is. Um, I mean, it's it's a law of averages. I mean, sometimes like it's it is what it is. Sometimes every hitter uh, goes through it a little bit. But for me, it's uh, I that time was the first nine ten games of the season, and um, I, I feel like. Like like I said before, the past um, eight or nine games have been on a on a slow uptrend, which is which is good. That's what you want. And for me, I want to get better each and every day, and I want to be uh, keep improving every single day. So um, I, I just want to keep 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 everything snowballing, the quality of that snowballing together, and uh, just keep moving forward so I can uh, help this team win. Thanks, Pete. 
Mm -hmm. Next next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Pete. Uh, last week you had the team off day followed by two games in which you were DHing instead of first base. Was there anything you were able to do with that time in terms of I don't know, whether it's putting extra work in or just, uh, you know, anything it might be to kind of help yourself out of some of the early season struggles? I guess um... – I guess for me, I, I like playing the field. I, I don't like to DH that much. Uh, but I guess, I mean, for, for us, like, I, we have so many, so many guys that can help this team win. And we're so dynamic as a, as a lineup. And I feel like tonight is a, you could, it was a prime example of uh, when we're hitting on all cylinders. And you can see just one through nine, like, guys, guys can hurt you in so many different ways. So uh, for me, I think I use those DH days as, um, like I would say active rest days because uh, I, I have a very good relationship and open dialogue with Louie and he's like, hey, um, like we, like you're, you're our guy. Like we, you know, you're one of our most important guys and we want to get you in the lineup any way possible. Um, I know that we have a bunch of other great pieces in the lineup, but hey, listen, like this is a way that we can get you in the lineup, get you off your feet because uh, we need you every single day because um, I mean, that's, that's how it is, and and basically it's uh, kind of pr to protect me and get some other guys in there because um, it's a short season with a quick ramp up, and I guess he was um, like taking into consideration like getting me off my feet because we don't have another off day for a really long while, and um, when you play that many games in a row on the field, like something could potentially happen. So he's he's looking out uh, for my best interest in the future and looking out for for other guys and getting other. Um, getting other guys in there so it's it's awesome and uh there's so many different guys that that are swinging it well right now so it's it, it's basically pick your poison yeah had, had you even put your your bat and your helmet down when dom hit his out i mean i i went through the high five line and then and then it's like whack and dom's like oh hell yeah so it's i mean when it's always a, it's always a, a really really fun time when guys go back to back and i'm, I'm happy domo uh went up top i mean those that was fun. I, I didn't see him uh, make contact, but I saw, I heard it, and I watched the ball. I'm like, dang, that's that's it right there. That's a nice one. So I, I heard it. I didn't see it, but um, seeing the ball fly carry over, like, deep into the bullpen, that's a that's a pretty sight. Well, thank you. Next, yeah. question, next question comes from Ed Coleman. Uh, hey, Pete, this, this kind of spins off Tony a little bit. Uh, I know you don't like to sit, but – you sat yesterday just observing and maybe talking to people uh, and what you talked about before, you were beginning to feel better. Did that help at all? I mean, I, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, for me, it's, uh, I mean, I, every, every guy wants to be out there. And for me, it's, I, I, I mean, in a way it's like, I, I mean, I haven't been playing well and it's like, all right, like I, and I'm, I'm benched today and I know we got my shirts on the mound. And it's like, all right, like I'm going to use that as motivation and uh, and and do what I can to ball out today and uh, and every day forward because every day is an opportunity and um, it's something that I, I love doing and I know like um, I, I trust Louie and Louie has uh, has every single one of our best interests in mind and uh, I guess this kind of goes back to um, we got a ton of games in a row I don't I think our next off day is probably. Thir 13 days from now, right? Maybe more? No, ne next week. Next week. Well, next week, so that's yep. eight in a row probably. So, I mean, there's a ton of baseball in, in a short amount of time with this uh, jam-packed schedule this year. It's a unique schedule. So, uh, he's, he's looking out for uh, my best interest, staying healthy, being able to, um, I guess, like stay in the lineup. So, I'm, I'm really happy that um, – I'm really happy that he has everyone's best interest and my best interest. Uh, and I mean, he's the man, so he's he's looking out uh, for every single one of us. And um, ultimately, his goal is to is to put all of us in the best positions to, to help the team win. So um, I used it yesterday as a as a as a as a day uh, to, to kind of reflect. And then um, and we I got in there today and um, just did my thing. I think it worked. Thanks. Yeah. Next question comes from Tim Britton. Hey, Pete, you, you mentioned some of the other guys in the lineup. What, what does Brandon Nimmo in particular bring to your batting order, especially when he's seeing as many pitches as he has lately? 
So we got a we got a running joke uh, when when Brandon Nimmo goes up to the plate. It's like a force field where the pitcher can't throw a strike because he has just the most laser sharp eyes ever. I mean, he just his plate discipline is absolutely unbelievable. He can beat you uh, with speed. He can beat you with a uh, hitting a line drive in the gap. I mean, he's a he's always on. He's one of those guys that's always on base and. Uh, having him uh, set the table or like today starting the game um, with a homer. I mean, that's that's awesome. So, I mean, he's a tremendous asset uh, no, ma no matter where he is in the order. And, I mean, uh, he's just an outstanding player. So, I mean, he's he's on a roll. And, I mean, I, he's he's hot. And I want to have him, uh, have him keep doing his thing. And then Louis said last night you had a little conversation with him that you kept reminding him of today as you were having a nice night. What was that conversation last night with Louis like? I told him the same thing I told you guys. I'm taking off. Like, um, so yesterday um, during the off day, it's like, hey, Lou, like, just want to let you know, like, I'm feeling like, just want to let him know, like, hey, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm progressively getting there. Like, I'm feeling better. I'm in the, I'm in the takeoff process right now. So, hey, I, like, whenever you need me off the bench, like, I, I'm ready. Like, I'm there. I'm, I'm your guy. So, it's, like, I was just letting them know, like, if there's an opportunity for me and come in and, and try and help help the team win uh, last night, then, hey, I'll, I'll be ready. Whenever you need me, just just come holler, like, uh, in, down in the cage, and I'll, I'll come up ready to go. Um, and then and today it's like, hey, I told you, I, I'm, I'm taking off. So that's, it's just kind of some friendly little banter right there. Thank you. Yeah. Next question comes from Rich Catino. Hey, Pete, when you look at a night like you guys had tonight, not only the home runs, but the two out hits, the RBI hits, the walks, the extend innings, is this your best offensive game in the year? And if so, can you build on it? I mean, this is a. I mean, this was a, a such a complete win. I mean, we had contributions from absolutely everybody, and I mean, this is a this is a glimpse of what uh, of what is is more to come, in, in my opinion. Because I, I think that I, I've said this numerous times in the off season. I've said this in spring training, 1.0, 2.0, and even at the beginning of the year. And I think this is such a complete win. And I, I think that's um, – we got more to come. And I feel like it's it's still early. We still have two-thirds of the season left. Uh, we have two-thirds of the season and one game. So I think uh, for us, I mean, there's 16 teams in the playoffs. I mean, that it's it's still wide open. It's still early. And I think if we get all of, uh, all of our pieces kind of clicking and moving together and hitting on all cylinders, I, I think um, – I think we got a real, real awesome chance. So – I mean, it's early, and it's just a matter about sticking sticking it out day to day, grinding it out, and uh, keep pushing forward. And uh, we're going to keep doing that. Thanks, Pete. Pete, thank you very much for your time this evening. Of course. Thanks, guys. LGM. Brandon, your first question tonight comes from Steve Gelbs. So, Brandon, uh, we just got through talking to Pete, and he said there's a running joke whenever you go up to the plate that there's a, a force field around you where pitchers can't throw strikes. Um, are you aware of that that joke, and what do you think of it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am, I am aware of it. Yeah, they think I have a force field that I put around the strike zone. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, they'll come back and they'll – or they'll like walk on four pitches and they'll be like, I engaged my force field. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they, there's, I know about that joke. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't, I don't think I do, but maybe, I don't know. But maybe I got something that I just throw up there. I don't know. <laughs> as much as the talk was about your plate discipline, uh, to hit that home run, first of all, after the, the top of the first. And I know it's a solo shot. You guys are still down 3-1. But how big did you feel that was for the guys and, and just to turn that momentum right around really quickly? Yeah, it was, I mean, I think it was huge. Uh, we, we always talk about when we put up runs that we want our pitchers and our defense to go uh, have a shutdown inning. Uh, it means a lot in baseball to be able to – uh, go out there and after you put up a few runs to uh, not let them really grab any momentum. So to be able to grab that back uh, first first at bat, um, I think was really important. Um, you know, glad I could help in that way. 
Um, it's not like I, you know, was like, yeah, I'm going to go hit a home run here. I was just trying to put the barrel on the ball and, uh, you know, it, it happened to happen to get out uh, of the park. But um, I think it was important. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm glad I could help there. But it, it, it's big in baseball to be able to kind of answer back and, and, and try and grab some momentum back after those big innings. Brandon, you say it wasn't your intent to hit the home run there. In the sixth and seventh, though, when they're shifting you the way that they did, obviously, you know, the, the bunt, it was your intent to go that way. Um, yeah. You get the hit to that side, the open hole as well. How much are, are you, especially in that seventh, going up there, seeing they're shifting you again and trying to do what you did? Uh, you know, for that uh, last hit, I, I'm just trying, you know, I'm just trying to put the barrel on the ball. Um, you know, he's um, – the score is what it is, and I, and I figure he's probably going to want to attack. Um, and, and so I'm just trying to get up there and put the barrel on the ball. I think, you know, if I go back – I haven't seen the video yet, but I, if I go back, probably be around the middle of the plate. And guys throwing 95 miles an hour, it doesn't – never looks easy. Um, so, you know, I think I just – Happen to find find the barrel and, and be you know ha be behind the ball, which is which is where I like to be uh, when I'm going well. I'll, I'll hit behind the ball and uh, and keep my hands inside of it. So I really was just try not trying to do too much there, um, rather than um, you know go up and try and hit another home run. Like that's that's not me. I, I don't I don't really try and hit home runs. They they just happen. Uh, but um, you know to go up there and just I just wanted to find the barrel again and uh, and you know it happened to shoot that way. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely working on it in, in batting practice and, and in the cage, just, just trying to be, be a complete hitter. I think that's, that's all it really comes down to and, and let them shift however they want, but I just want to be the most complete hitter that I, that I can be so that I can open up more holes. Thanks. Next question comes from Britton. Hey, Brandon, how, how do you feel about your plate approach overall this year? How different is it from the start of last season when it, it just seemed out of whack for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, I think I, I'm trying to keep the same mindset. Um, I, I, believe it or not, back then I was not trying to strike out as much as I did. Uh, you know, they just kind of exposed a weakness um, that I, I knew was uh, – I found out was there. Um, now I've just been trying to work on the swing to, uh, to try again, be a more complete hitter. Um, you know, I think they found a hole up in, in the zone and, and now I've just been trying to, um, you know, spoil that pitch. Um, and, and then they go down. It's just, it's a cat and mouse game and I'm really just trying to, to, uh, play it well and try and be like, like I said, a complete hitter that can cover the strike zone. Um, I'm not going to try and hit. A home run at, at every pitch in the strike zone, but I want to just be able to battle and um, and, and be basically the whole premise of of my uh, approach and and this season so far. Because believe me, I you know haven't felt great. <laughs> this season has been uh, just grind and and just try and be a tough out up there. Go up there, um, grind it out, and just, just try and give it the best at bat that you can, and, and just be a tough out. So. Um, when I've gone up there and done that, that's been the approach this year. Um, maybe last year, you know, I, I might have let pride get me a little bit um, and, and still trying to do too much with two strikes. Um, and so now I'm just – I really am trying to just grind up there, be a tough out um, every pitch, and, and really just uh, I think grind is the best word for it. And defensively, you've made a couple of nice catches up against the wall the first couple of weeks of the season. After what happened last season – what is your comfort level, you know, approaching the wall that, that way and, and looking out for it? Yeah, uh, so, I mean, we've been working on balls over the head um, this whole offseason and then the first spring training um, and then coming back for spring training 2.0. Um, I'm just going back on balls and, and being better at that. Um, and I, I think it's really uh, showed in, in, in a few plays and, uh, you know, in, in my comfortability out there for sure um, on going back on balls. Um, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, I feel comfortable uh, out around the fence there. Um, I think the most important part is um, is just, you know, the repetition and, and kind of challenging myself in batting practice. And um, and uh, when, we, when we have done our work, um, just being really comfortable with going back there. But, um, yeah, it's been it's been good. I, I, feel, I feel very comfortable going back to the fence this year. Thank you. <laughs> Your next question comes from Tony DeComo. Brandon, uh, coming into tonight, your batting average was 218. Your on-base yeah. percentage was 427. 
<laughs> I feel like most front office people around the game would say they don't care at all about the batting average. They only care about the OBP. As someone who's known best for the on base, uh, do you care about the average? I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, I want to, I want to get hits. And so like I, like I told you, I, I, you know, haven't felt great at the plate. Um, and, and so I've just been grinding. Um, and, and that's where the on-base percentage has come on. I'm just like, all right, I, well, you know, I, I want to be productive somehow. How can I help my team? Um, and that's okay. You know, like, all right, hey, I got two strikes on me. All right, I'm going to grind. Yeah, I'm just going to try and do the best I can here. Um, you know, and just get on base. Um, you know, okay. You know, like the bump was was open there, um, and, and so I, I tried to lay one down and, and did successfully, um, and pass it on to the next guy. Um, you know, and so really that's been my mindset this this whole season. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm confident that at some point I'm going to come around and, and feel good at the plate and go through a nice little hot streak and try and ride that. But um, for now, you know, I'm just. I'm just trying to focus on how can I be productive, and and you know that's what I do best is just getting on base. Um, you know the average will come, um, but I, I do care. I you know I like hits, and you know that's how you advance people, and and you know when guys on third base, and um, you know I want I want to get that RBI uh, with less than two outs, and I and I want to drive the guy in from second base, and you know I I, I had that bat today where the bases were loaded, two outs, and I grounded out, and you know I would love to come through there. But, um, you know, in baseball, you got to try and look at the positives because there's so many negatives. And, uh, and so, you know, one positive is I have been getting on base and being a tough out and being a grinder up there and trying to be productive for my team. So um, that's what I'm going to try and do. And, and I'm going to continue to try and get better and, like I said, become a, a well-rounded hitter. Thank you. Brandon, thank you for your time this evening. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Ethan. This ends the post the Mets post game zoom room.